The DreamHack Summer 2015, it's time to continue the round five here of the Swiss portion of our 128-man bracket. We have Stan Sivka, who recently joined Luminosity Gaming, as well as, uh, you know, the, I guess the reigning DreamHack champion, if you would to pick one for the year. DreamHack Bucharest, you came in first place. And, of course, Lothar, who's been casting the weekend the entire time with me. How you doing, Stan? Yeah, I've just lost the previous round, so I pick up third loss, so I'm basically out of the tournament, but yeah, I really like it here, so, and the field is very tough here, so it's like no shame to get out of the tournament. Does it, does it feel like, you know, a little bit more to your core with playing Swiss rounds here at DreamHack compared to some of the, you know, groups and invitational type of structure? Well, it's different, you know, it's very good to mix stuff around, so mm -hmm. it is, this is like very good experience. It reminds me a lot of the BlizzCon qualifier. And yeah, it's very tough for the players, and it's a great event. Obviously. That's good. Well, coming up, we have Tice, uh, a teammate of Lothar's uh, from Nylum, up against Frezar from Team Fnatic. Uh, how, how's Tice doing? He's the only member from your team, Lothar, who's you've just been on fire. Like, Nylum's winning almost everything here. But Tice, uh, he's, he came in here struggling a little bit in the beginning. Yeah, kind of. Well, um, he had a rough start, that's true, but he's still fighting here. And we'll be seeing his, how he's de de doing in this tournament with this match, because most of the time when we practice, Tice is one of the most flawless players I've ever seen. Well, Flowiest? Flawless. Oh, flawless. Flawless, <laughs> yes. Yeah, I, I wasn't sure if you were dropping a new adjective on me. <laughs> sorry. Uh, so his, his play is almost always on spot, and uh, really, it's really amazing to see players like Lab Coach Tice and RDU are playing and, uh, in such tournaments when they there's no difference between you know for them being on stage and playing practice because it's um, it doesn't really affect the nerves and I I bet Science of has a lot to say about that right you you're used to play yeah. on big events yeah so there's no b difference for you too right yeah it's true and it's really necessary to get used to and not, mm -hmm. not being mm -hmm. stressed and like exactly you avoid a lot of mistakes by, by this so I'm I'm wondering more of about Fraser here because he was struggling with his result with yeah. his results lately and now he's four one here so he's you know, he was for all. Uh, now he's uh, fighting for his life here because uh, five two. It might. It, it's like really slight chance of advancing with a five two. I think it's result. actually been squashed. Uh, they were talking about some clarifications of what happens if a five two player can overtake a six one if six one can't make it. But it seems to be resolved. So I think five two is no longer eligible at the top. Eight. I think that's okay. the case. Yeah, there should be clean. Yeah, clean cut. it should be a clean cut at this point. Uh, originally thought maybe there's a chance because of the way. Like the DNS has actually showed up, but mm -hmm. it should be fine now. Uh, so basically, it is elimination again for all of these players. Now, Frezar last summer, Dreamhack summer, he also went through the BYOC portion yes. and got to the top 16 that way. That's Very true. tough competition. You were in that, Lothar. You were one round away. Yeah, Kit Kats was he there. He actually kicked Force me out. Was there too. Oh, Frezar was the guy who eliminated you. Yeah. <laughs> so we were, okay, we were playing yeah. on the stage to qualify for, to, to make a qualification for the main event. He, he kicked me out. So gotcha. I have a grudge, you know. <laughs> oh, do you? Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm just joking. But yeah. All right, well, uh, taking a look at this, it seems to be a traditional matchup that we've seen a lot, which is Rogue versus the Handlock. Um, and, you know, both players get what they want, right? The Rogue gets the coin and the extra card. The Handlock gets to go first and put out the threat. But who, wh what position do you like better? I guess you're the Handlock player. I'm well, sure I no, the, the matchup is very close, and, like, it's a lot about uh, the early game, and uh, Taish is missing the fourth draw, which is very crucial in this matchup. Like, if you don't play the Giant or Drake, you're in very bad shape most of the time, so... This is not looking good for Tice. Obviously, he has a low, ta low tap, so he can get back with good timing of this card. And like Tarusan is also very relevant card from the both both oh, sides. Oh, for so sure, for sure, so it's yep. great addition. But do you yeah, do you think that Tarusan is really needed in Rogue? Like I feel most of the time you have so so many spells that are really cheap. You don't, you don't really need the Emperor at all. Yeah, yeah, it's true that it's not that great as in Handlock, for example, but yeah. uh, it's very good in control against control decks because, you know, you get, get uh, your cards cheaper and it's very difficult for control deck to clear it out right away, so sure, sure. it's not that great against aggro decks, but uh, it's one of the best cards against control, so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it depends on what you want to tune it against. I mean, speaking of the devil, Empathorsen does come to the hand of the Handlock player, so he's got something for that turn, but in the meantime, Fezzer's got a lot of finesse cards. You know, Blade Flurry and Oil is a way that you can pressure to leverage the aim, but he's got a second Blade Flurry. Like, that's that's kind of sitting awkwardly in the hand. I talked to players like Firebat. He loves this matchup against Handlock as a rogue player. And I, I find that very interesting, considering that a lot of players traditionally feel like this is a tougher matchup uh, more often than not, even if you feel like it's close. 
Well, yep. in my opinion, this matchup improved vastly for the Rogue when they in introduced the sh Tinker Shards of uh, Oil, you know? Because usually the Rogue was falling short of damage mm -hmm. and the Oil uh, just buffed the weapon so much and right. at the same time it buffed the, uh, the clear abilities of the Rogue. And that was the thing right. that was struggling with uh, to clear those, you know, high health taunted minions because you would have only saps for that. Now you have the Blade Fury potential. What I was told from Firebat is that the key to this matchup from the Rogue is to make sure that you can build up a big weapon just to yes. threaten Blade Flurry. Maybe not even exactly. necessarily to use it, but that you have like a six damage dagger, six one, it's like, well, maybe I'll use it, maybe I won't. And then, you know, then, then Handlock can't deal with it. And all of a sudden, you're threatening Druid type of pressure where you can Blade Flurry and then use an Azure Drake to end the game. Yeah. And also, the teacher is quite uh, useful in this matchup. So true, true. But it's fallen out of favor, right? Many many rogues are not playing teacher well, anymore. Grim patron, I mean, come on. There's no yeah, time yeah, for yeah, learning uh, anymore. It's <laughs> not that great in the meta game, but it's one of the key cards against handlock. So mm. that's true. Well, it's kind of sad to see uh, the teacher like not synergize at all with the Tinker Sharps at all. Right? That's one of the, yeah. the most awkward <laughs> deck building uh, situations <laughs> ever, right? Well, you know, it wouldn't be fun <laughs> without a little bit of uh, randomness, as a, I assume. So, this is turn six. This is an Emperor Thorson on the full hand, but yeah, is there it's any the play here. bad and then you have to playing? It's kind of risky, you know? It's a little bit risky. You can die somehow if he has like, a <laughs> yeah. very nutty hand, but you have to take the risk. Prep oil. oil. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Nothing well, of that sort. There is a backstab and an oil. Yeah, and a flurry. So that would be 8 plus 6. That's 14. But do you want to risk the Molten Giants right now? Because yeah. you, have no, you have only one sap. So, well, it's a highly unlikely situation <coughs> when if there would be like double Molten Giants, right? So maybe you just want to risk it, but you lack the Eviscerate to finish the game off. Yeah, you don't have the finishing damage. You have SI as direct damage to get past, but if he has a heal bot... He, like, this is turn 7 too, which is Molten Giant, heal bot, and a taunt time. Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. he has, his hand is cheaper, so he can oh, also... Oh, that's true. You're right. <laughs> he can even do more than that. Yeah. Well, also, one thing is um, Im important here. Fraser is not known for being the aggressive player, you know? And I'm, when I look at his games, it's, he's always trying to like play around so many things that he's all, all playing himself. Gotcha. Well, ends up going for a trade on Thorson. I mean, that is a big threat. Yeah. You can't get the hand lock to sweeps of the mana. Yeah, reduction. he's just building the board and preparing the big Blaze Fury because if he draw the Deadly Poison, he can set up the big weapon, so yeah, it's well, probably correct. In this situation, he has to use the Sap to make wow. a combo with the Tinker Shots. I didn't really like that, because Backstab is one of the best cards to combo with for, for the Shin Tinker Shots sh yeah. Oil. Yeah. So I... Then you, you're like you're leaving um, the, the Oil to chance. If you top deck like a Preparation yep. or a Deadly Poison, because those are the, will be the best two draws ever right now. Well, most likely the opponent will play something, so you can also sap for it. But then you, you don't have the mana to use Yeah, but you somehow it. want to save the sap for the big yeah, town. Yeah, true. I mean, how, how unlucky is this, too, that Tice doesn't have any threat to play, yeah, really? He's got reactive cards. Well, he had the Tarisan, so it's like better than anything else. It's true, so it's true. It should be fine in this game, I assume. That ah. was a Molten Giant, so that's, that's kind of okay-ish. I mean, he can definitely play it next turn if uh, his opponent leaves him at a low health. I was wondering about Talnos in current handlocks, you know? Because that was a card that was being played a yeah. really long time ago. In, in because it was good with Soulfire and now... Yeah, and, and with Soulfire, but now there's like always double Mortal Coils. Mm -hmm. Double Hellfire, Sword of Flame is also okay. Sprint. Not bad. Sprint is a very good card now <laughs> because the That's handlock sick. doesn't have a pressure because... Yeah, exactly. So now... So I guess now you now you sprint. This now is the turn. Sprint, this yeah. is the turn, yeah. Perfect draw for the turn seven. And it's not <laughs> green. Yeah. It's not a goblin. Uh, well, it, it is green around the edges here. But uh -oh. it's hmm. more about what he draws after that, right? If he gets another form, like a deadly poison, to start activating his uh, oil pretty cheaply, another preparation, yeah. so that yeah, way he can get a big play. Yeah. There is a lot of options here. I think he's just calculating just on the off chance if he could kill him by uh, any measure, but he, I don't think he can. And as a rogue, again, you need to be able to pick up those weapon threats so that you can uh, go for the big blade. Yeah, yeah, he just needs to pick up a lot of... Yeah, that's, that's, that's the second sap. Eviscerate. 
Th those was free yeah. pickups yeah. you really wanted. Yeah, but he also needed some preparation to be play, be able to play all the cards. So, well, he has eight mana next turn. So yeah. deadly poison oil. So that's uh, that's five, and then you have a blade flurry. Yeah, it's true, but it's not gonna be lethal and. Hmm. Interesting. So he was thinking about hitting into the the ancient watcher preemptively, so that way I guess the Argus doesn't get an easy trade. What's he looking for there? Well, now he can get trade by two free, and you know the watcher would have only four toughness, so he can Eviscerate. deal with it gotcha. easily. So it was definitely an option. Wow, Tice is thinking of tapping. Then who will probably be pushed to play antique healbot, which is kind of. Really awkward when you have a molten gem ready in hand, but I guess th this might be. Oh wow! Yeah, he's this got a couple options here. Three, he has six, a lot nine. of options. Like he can play the drake and taunt it. If he wants to play the drake, he has to taunt it because otherwise he was most likely dead. Especially after he saw that sprint, right? Well. It's very difficult because your opponent doesn't have a minion, so it's. Somehow not necessary to town, but right. In fact, oh, if like, you like, like if you don't put enough pressure on the board, you could lose in like three turns because you know Rogue has a lot of cards, so he can just mm -hmm. set up for Blade Fury. So you need to also put some pressure, which Taish is doing. So yeah, I mean this streak doesn't. But he's like in danger to die in this well, turn. Wait, it's, it's, it's probably lethal? gonna be lethal. Yeah. Yeah. No, it certainly is. You just equip the oil yeah, and sap and you attack face, and then you can use SI7 to finish. Yeah. Assuming you have enough mana, though. That's I, why I, I didn't like the uh, big game hunter here instead of Sunsweep Protector, you know? Yeah, yeah it's true that it, it's kind of likely that you lose the game on the spot, but on the other hand, it's more of like more aggressive play, and you cannot blame him because okay, he needed like preparation and a lot of specific cards, so... Yeah, I mean, there's a, a lot of direct damage. Yeah, it was like 50% that he's gonna die on the spot, but... Yeah. Alright, well, like you said, missing that 4-drop, or that turn yeah. 4 play for Tice ended up costing him big on the board, because from the rest of the point, Fresno just kept punishing, essentially. And yeah, like, he just yeah. draw a lot of cards, and otherwise he wouldn't have time if he would get the hit yeah. by 8 turns, so... But, you know, uh, looking at the lineups, both players, the Rogue was kind of favorite to win anyway, at some point. Well, the game. it's not that easy because Druid is very good against Rogue, but yeah, obviously it's very good against Paladin, so it was uh, Fraser's strongest deck, so it kind of makes sense he started with this up. Uh, he sh probably should have problems with his Control Warrior because... Yeah, Control Warrior against Handlock and Druid. And Druid. Druid and and also, yeah. Tice Paladin is like, uh, contains a lot of expensive cards, like Sky Golem, so he should be in trouble with this deck, but mm -hmm. his control warrior is also very greedy. It, it, I think it has double brawl and all the expensive cards. So double brawl, so he's like tweaking. Wow. It's well, tweaked against patterns. Yeah, he's like, first I was very good prepared for Grim Pattern, Warrior deck, so. Yeah, it seems like to be the, the case here, because Rogue is, and um, the, the control warrior is great against Patron, and then. He brings his own handlock, able to shut it down. Yeah. And that's what we're going to go into. Handlock mirrors. This is getting Stan Sivka really excited. So what, what do you think about handlock versus handlock nowadays? Because it's seen a lot of change over the, the past year or so. Well, it, yeah, it's like a little different than it was like a year ago when everyone was playing Leroy and the Soulfire. Now it's a lot more about uh, having threats and having answers for them than having like burst 20 damage. Yeah, it's a lot about BGH, obviously, and about the giant and about an owl. It's kind of more important to have the answers than the threats, because if you answer the giant with BGH, you, you get small advantage. If you answer Drake with owl, you also get small advantage. So, as you can see, Taish has a threat while he's not Fraser having answers. Fraser Morgan away an owl. An owl, yeah. And I kind of disagree with this. Yeah, I, I would totally keep the owl and the mortal coil in this situation. I'm not sure about the mortal coil, actually, because in some games it's a lot about uh, picking no. BGH and Tarisan mm -hmm. and this kind of stuff. But yeah, I would definitely keep an owl. Well, he got it back anyway. So. Oh, yeah. man. Tice not only has two, three threats, he also has the answer to the threat. I mean, he has it all, essentially. Well, both players of Giants, but uh, Fraser is missing the Twilight Drake. Yeah, he's also going second, too, so if he has 
I guess he really wanted to fish for <laughs> that's a response. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's kind of kind of fortunate for him. <laughs> that's right. I mean, that's kind of how it works, right? You mulligan away and you draw it immediately. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. that's how it works. Yeah. I thought that was programmed into the game. Yeah. They should fix that at some point, right? Yeah. 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 Now it's awkward for Fraser because he doesn't have a play. Yeah. And well, if he, the only thing he can do here is tap into play coin and hopefully draw ancient watcher or something yeah, like or that. Yeah, or he can tap and just coin, coin. for nothing. Right. For nothing. Yeah, 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 that's also And I would prefer to do this because yeah. coin has I, think random, I think a random card is slightly better than a coin and uh, losing mm -hmm. to life isn't deal at all yeah, exactly. in this Every matchup. Deal. And uh, he can get lucky and draw a watcher as well. So Tice goes now. W it makes sense to go with the giant first because um, like other Hendrix players have two counters to Twilight Drake in the form of Arvus and only one counter to a giant in, uh, in the form of a big game hunter. Yeah, it's right. like it really depends. Like sometimes if you don't have uh, any follow up, you just go turn for Drake and then tap and uh, giant. Mm -hmm. While Tice has another giant and he also has BGH for opponent's giant, so it makes yeah. a lot of sense to start with giant here. Mm -hmm. And it's a lot of pressure. Yeah, it's a lot of pressure. Yeah. I mean, but we do see that Tice has that big game hunter already, so he's ready to escalate this rather quickly, considering that his board will be much stronger. Yeah. And the one thing that you do are worried about is pressuring too much that your board gets wiped through a Molten Giant play, but there's nothing in Fresno's hand. Yeah. Like that's an yeah. And he also has Shadow Flame, which kind of allows you to not play around Molten Giant because, oh yeah. you know, you can deal with them very easily after. So I think Tice is in very good shape in this. At this Yikes. moment. Yikes. Eight That's damage to the face. <laughs> Twelve damage on board. Uh, what's he going to do here? Um, ja well, he does one taunt giver. So what we can do is ancient watch the stem the bleeding for a second, but doesn't really do much in the upcoming turn, right? So that's mm. also Shadow Flame, but they're lacking the Molten Giant, as you said. Right. Yeah. Stuff, right? So like, you could play a lot tab here and... Just pretend you have the Molten Giant, so your opponent may not like hit you for 12, and in that case you just develop the board, you can uh, play mol mol sorry, Mountain Giant and the, the Shadow Flame. Yeah, because you have the coin. You can, you, because you have the coin, so it's kind of tricky play, obviously, if he just, uh, if Tice just attack for 12. Yeah, I agree with the Lotus being the best option here. Well, it's, it's an option, like, you, you definitely can develop your board, it's not bad at all as well. Yeah, I don't think he's at least worried about dying here. There's really any, rarely Ooh. anything unless he had a specific combination of cards to kill him from this point on. Thorson's pretty juicy, but you do have other threats you can play as well. Now, this is a really tricky turn. Yeah, now you have a lot of options if you tie here. You can just trade the Giants and play Tower Sun. That was my first first. Yeah, it's like here. It's like the first thing which comes to your mind and... It's probably very safe. It's very safe and you still have a lot of pressure on board because yeah. nine, nine, uh, you have 9, nine damage. damage and the, your yeah. hand went cheaper. So And there was no answer for the Mountain Giant or the Big Game Hunter. Yeah, so what's, so the, what's the answer for the Emperor now? Well, yeah, he can. He could uh, Siphon Soul, but he doesn't have it. So yeah. That's, that's like now Shadow he Flame Mortal Coil. No, you can uh, Owl here and the Defender. Your owl, your own watcher, and uh, what the about Shadow Flame on Ancient Watcher and Coil? Yeah, it's other option, but uh, I like this a bit more because uh, the Shadow Flame is very valuable card, and mm -hmm. you also mm -hmm. keep some board because you have three two and uh, mm -hmm. five one. Yeah. So it also uh, keeps it so that way the big game hunter doesn't really do much. It either suicides in one way or the other. Yeah, and he gets challenged by everything on the board, and Tiles. Hellfire would kill off his own minion too. Mm -hmm. Ties needed a Mordekoi here, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, Mordekoi would have been excellent considering the giant, uh, the Ancient Watcher is very weak, but he's got a lot of other stuff here too. He can play Hellfire and Mountain Giant afterwards. Mount Mountain mm -hmm. Giant, right? Yeah, yeah. That seems to be an all right option too. Again, he hasn't demonstrated he can deal with a giant, so I think placing another giant would be a great yeah. priority. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just took. Uh, Keep Shadow Flame for sure and just play Hellfire and play the Giant. Oh, you can even squeeze into tap because yeah. uh, Oh, yeah, right, because of Emperor. <laughs> <laughs> Two yeah. mana Mountain Giant. There <laughs> That's it is. the first time I see that. Yeah. It's 
I've seen one mountain. It's, uh, it's mountain good, mountain value. Yeah. good value. Good <laughs> value. 16 stats for two mana. You know how Mana Storm got power creeps? <laughs> like crazy. Yeah, now first are in trouble because... There's no taunts. There's he only... no town. He's yeah. His play is maybe an antique healbot here. Just the standard... Well, it's too defensive from my point of view that... But maybe you have to. You saw one hellfire, you didn't see any dark bombs. Dark yet. bomb, yeah. So, so, um, so in case he would stop and low tap, he would die to dark bomb. It's, yeah. Then perhaps Sylvanas to challenge the board on the giant. Sylvanas is not bad, yes. Well, if you Sylvanas, say you stay at five, yeah, it's it's an option. And the other option is just to tap and hope to have draw a big game hunter or something like this. And in case you don't, to just heal bot. Mm -hmm. it, it also because depends. you are so much behind that you probably should take some risk. Mm -hmm. And maybe, I don't know if he plays, maybe he has like one Siphon Soul in his deck. Yeah, it's also possible. Right. I, I don't know his exact list. Really safe play. Well, this is like safe play like in order not to die, but I'm not sure if it's like the winning uh, mm -hmm, winning mm -hmm. way. Yeah, I agree. So you, now you can, an example, play tap into low tap. I would probably just uh. develop the board, play Drake and low tap and attack face. Mm -hmm. Because then he is at 5, he cannot Shadow Flame very easily. Alright, well, he can't actually tap, he's got too many cards. So playing the Drake and the low tap just keeps him at 8 cards, which is fine. Pretty healthy, reasonable amount. And now you just go face because he yeah. you're not in danger of dying or anything. Yeah, and Shadow Flame is for 9 mana. Whoa, he clears what? that. Uh, he, uh, this is like... I don't really That's like it That's interesting. Because, he, like you said, he's been spell blocked by, uh, by Lothab. Yeah, so you don't really care about any kind of threats here from Lothab. I mean, let's be real. This won't really change the outcome, but it's a very interesting yeah. play regardless. Well, I don't know if there was a possibility to die some Unreal cards like Erkin Golem or something like this. Probably not. But this is like Benning Way as well. So By the way, the coin the co was so useful in this match. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, there's really <laughs> nothing else you can do here. <laughs> Tap into the Sludge Belcher, doesn't the even stall. Uh, does it stall? That's a Mortal Coil. Doesn't so it? No, it's little. you can try it and play yeah. Shadow Flame. Yeah, Shadow, you have Shadow Flame, so that's no problem. And a Hellfire, too. So yeah. you know. there's, there's, there's definitely a combination here for uh, lethal. <laughs> so that'll wrap it up, and Tice takes the, the Handlock Mirror, but yeah. he yeah. was in a pretty sharp lead from the very beginning. Again, going first, pretty huge, being able to play the threat, but also yeah. having the response to the threat. Yeah, it's now it's a lot about BGHing the other giant and yeah, that was since a huge then it's since then it's most of the time just snowball. And he also had the tower sandwiches. Well he had everything basically. Yeah, he had everything yeah. And, yeah. Food. and in contradiction to the first game when he didn't have anything. Yeah. <laughs> so All that's right, how so it works. So you have everything even. you win, if you doesn't have anything you lose, so <laughs> There's still the handlock. That was quite a simplification. Oh yeah. well, well I mean Frezar will have to put that in the back seat. But Handlock could be a, a liability if the Paladin and the Druid are great against Handlock tech. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That could be difficult to deal with. Yeah, Tice lineup is great against Handlock because he runs double big game hunter in the, his Handlock, and oh, the other know. two decks are very, very I didn't prepared know about as well. Second big game hunter. Well, double the BGH, double the fun. Oh my goodness! Like Wait, I was not scene. ready what? for this. Yeah, he, he's playing Dragon Paladin with Corruptors and... Uh, oh, Dragon really? Warrior? No, no, the Dragon Warrior, sorry. With the Corruptors With and Chromagus, though. Yeah, it's I mean, very unusual. I did not wake up this morning thinking I'd be able to see Big Daddy C in the house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was not a joke, I'm serious. I didn't expect it. Yeah, did I know, you? Yeah, yeah. No, no, I didn't expect it. I just was laughing at the nickname <laughs> <that> he gave. <laughs> Look, Chromagus is awesome, but where does he fit in Warrior? I guess your card draw is Acolyte? I, I don't think you really care about the card draws. The fact that it's a dragon and well, he it, it is a wild girl, so. I, I guess he plays Nefarian too, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Nefarian is the best Chromagus dragon. Chromagus into Nefarian into draw. Do you get draw two? No, 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 you don't. Because uh, Nefarian just gives you the cards. It's not a draw. Yeah. So but it's the it same as draw? It's the same as Oh, Sarah. you're Sarah. Yeah, you don't yeah. double dip into your Sarah. You're gonna, you can oh, it's just add. Oh, okay, okay, okay. You're right. It says add two cards, not draw two yeah. cards. Yeah. Touche, sir. Touche. Now, the thing is, how does Dragon Warrior do relative to a druid that has you know, two Savage Wars and still tries to pressure you out of the game? Is it any better or worse than the normal Control Warrior? 
I think it's the same and even worse, it's right? I, I'm not sure. Like, the Corruptor is a very strong card, you know? But the Corruptor is only great against, let's say, Palutra Shredder. Yeah, but it's still body and you can, like, finish something with weapon and the free damage. So, and it's a very decent body and it's very good on a curve, so... It's slightly better, it's you think? I'm not sure, like, to be honest. I don't have that much experience in this matchup, but... It's, like, not bad, definitely. Okay. All right, well, we'll see. Uh, and he still has yet to draw those uh, Blackwing Corruptors, but he does have Nefarian in hand, so it will be active. Now, Fresno is being pushed to play a weapon here. If yeah. he plays Death Spite, he can pay really a huge price for that. Yeah. But oh, he's probably going to play the Vorex anyway. I think he will go for the Death Spite because he wants to clear a Belcher next turn. Yeah. And this will cost him yeah. really a lot. Wow, now Thais can use his hero power to snipe a minion. Mm. And That's throw, right. throw a shield on it. It's That's not right. <laughs> not working. <laughs> working as intended. The same way Fairy Dragon can uh, also be attacked by Druid hero power. Yeah. We're like, what? <laughs> when he first started playing Harvest, you're like, Fairy Dragon's supposed to be immune to hero power, and <laughs> Druid attacked me! Okay. That's right, I, I was a big dude when I first started. Well, uh, it doesn't matter the fact that the Steam Wheel Snipers, it's a minion that still sticks on the board and does damage. Mm -hmm. Pretty brutal that Harrison came down, but there is another weapon to clean up. Well, does Harrison act like a mini Ancient of Law in this matchup? Yeah, I mean, well, not to mention there is Ancient of Lore. Yeah, which is a huge, huge deal yeah. in this matchup. Yeah, but the uh, Fresh Hunt is also good, like the Sylvanas is going to be very useful probably, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. So the yeah. game is definitely not over. So, but still, the Sylvanas we will have to see like one turn still to see the Sylvanas. It's true. It's, it's five yeah. mana right now, and Ty is already ahead. He has six. Yeah, I, I'm not saying like Ty. What okay. do you think about Lotep th just this turn? It's not. It's not. Uh, it doesn't die to the weapon and the armor smith at the same time, and uh, it denies any shield block, shield slam, shield slam yeah. and shenanigans. Execute mm. also because execute is like six mana when you yeah. play it. Low tip on the next turn, right? Yeah, I like low tip here, actually. So yeah, you know, actually, yeah. you bring a good point. When I saw low tip, normally you try to pair it with like Shade of Max Ramus because in tandem they are really good. You can't remove Shade easily without spells, yep. mm -hmm. and normally you can save it for that. But by playing the low tip next turn, you can develop Shade and the Pilot Shredder, and then you have a Druid the Claw with Savage Roar. So you don't know if you can even leverage that to end the game the next turn. Yeah, three exactly. Because yeah. low tip is hard to remove. You have to sometimes take damage from it in order to remove it. Yeah. Is it their friend for them? <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> People don't know, but there's... What, what is even that? Is that... Is that Sauron? Is that no, no, that's someone from Dothan, cosplay? right? Cosplay? I think so. There's a, there's a guy that went full out, <laughs> and he's a little bit creepy. Um, <laughs> but more about this game. Yeah. He just drew Shield Block, uh, but he did have a way to deal with it through the Claw with Execute in the first place. Oh, there he is! Oh. Strike! He steals the show, though. <laughs> I don't even know what character that is. I wish I knew. I should have been that for the Fire Game instead of the Vampire. Let's, let's be real. You were a clown. I was a clown. Yeah. A very sad clown. Shield block just a cycle and get it up. And he does have uh, the armor for... Oh, sorry. The shield made it yeah. shield slam combination. So he doesn't have to worry about the armor. So now... Oh. Innervate? Does it really change this anything this turn? No. no not really. Probably just to draw two cards and... Yeah, draw two cards, it. but then it's it's so weak to so weak to shield slam. Yeah. It's really weak. So you can also play low tap and innervate shade. Or shredder. Or shredder. But how about a second innervate then? You can put out the pilot shredder with the That would be nuts. That would be <laughs> <laughs> that would be good, yeah. Excellent. But um, also like if from it was very good play because now if he if Fresar plays Shield Slam he doesn't. He cannot play the six drop. So yeah, that's right. a good point. Yeah. Well, so he loses it, a whole turn. And here. it was somehow clear that he doesn't have a five drop because he would play it otherwise mm -hmm, on his mm -hmm. turn. So it was actually a very good yeah. play. It makes sense too. Dropping armor uh, sh shield maiden. I was gonna call him armor maiden. <laughs> um, <laughs> shield <laughs> maiden. <laughs> let's not. Let's not get too crazy here. Uh, shield maiden still challenges that 5-5, five five, and if it attacks the face, it still can shield slam. And like you said, you don't want to miss development on the board, yeah. because if your opponent, for some reason, made a really weak play, like a bunch of small minions, then Dr. Boom comes out, and you can contest the board to potentially yeah. threaten the druid. Yeah, and also, like, the Sylvana is going to be very valuable, because Tyson has a lot of cards, so 
He can also expect he's gonna develop the board a lot, and you can also play Sylvanas and Shield Slam. Mm -hmm. Immediately, to take yeah. the value like yeah. without being worried about the Keeper. Uh, but I think this thing should be low tap into Pulse Shredder. Uh, I, mean, I mean, into Druid with the Claw. Capitalize on Innervate, right? Yeah, I like this. This is okay. A lot of minions have Savage I mean, Thrower. This is, the, this is the difference in style, I think, because I value low tap a lot. Against uh, against the warrior because it 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 just eats up his abilities to fight back with the executes and shield slams and those are really pesky uh, for the druid you know. I think this posture is for lethal, assuming his opponent doesn't so it's do it. Twenty four, so and oh it's wait, eleven. It's, it's not. It's only if his opponent doesn't uh, armor up. Um, but if his opponent, if he plays boom, he's dead because he's yeah. gonna die to druid and savage roar. Wow, there's an anti kill, but I just like I was watching, I was seeing the card. And yeah. It didn't really occur to me what kind of card it is. <laughs> yeah, this is better play because it's safer and the Sylvanas is very good at this moment because Tice just spent the silence and also he has two minions and it's very good against Shredder. So. But you have been lethal with combo now. Yeah. Yeah, but there there was there wasn't anything you could do about it. So. So you just play Azure Drake. And see what you draw, and probably probably shade afterwards, right? And just go, yeah, yeah. Go all in. It's somehow weak against Brawl because he can trade the Shredder and then play Brawl and steal the minion. It's gonna stay on the board. I don't think you should worry about that. Well, he knows he has double Brawl in the ha in his deck. Oh, he knows that. He knows okay. that, and so well, he does it anyway. So maybe he will not he will not play the minion. It does that make sense? It. Although it oh, is he should play it because yeah. it's not very valuable and you also forcing your opponent play the brawl in case he doesn't yeah, yeah, have yeah, it. Yeah. So that's that, that's true, that's true. So now Fraser is uh, really and now Fraser awful. is in big trouble. Yeah. He probably has to play Hillbot and uh, the Acolyte. And this and doesn't uh, really achieve much. Uh, yeah, he could pop the pilot shot. Well he's a good board if he doesn't die because he has Sylvanas. And he's twenty six, he's Taking 9, 17, 23, 24, so he will remain at one life if he plays heal bot and. Okay. Am I correct? Yeah, am I correct? I think right. so. Yeah, I think, I think so. you've yeah. got it correctly. Yeah, he already It depends on the. Oh, okay, never mind. So that's 7, 9, 9 yeah. damage, yeah, plus 8, 17. Double Savage Roar, that's 8, that's 16, 16 19, 20, 23, 25, 26. and no, that's not enough. That's not enough. You should probably just play Lotep and the Druid now and, and set shove. up for a little next turn because he cannot play Brawl because he has only 9 mana and you have a lot of minions, so mm -hmm. he probably mm -hmm. cannot deal with all of them, especially if there's a Lotep so he cannot yeah. use yeah, the yeah, removal. Def definitely a good point here. So but I would just play low tap and charge through it and attack with everything face and then double savage throw next turn and it should be enough. Yeah, I mean low tap definitely feels like a great setup though for sure. So low tap first, then you charge the druid of the claw and go everything. Go face. everything face, so you go all in with everything. That's four. It's thirteen eight, damage, ten, so he remains damage. at fourteen, and you have yeah. six minions, so like three of them probably gonna survive. And then you probably will see a. Oh, oh, goes for that. So this is a halfway play, because then he still gets to keep through the College Savage for next turn, too. Yeah, and this is also very good. Yeah, I mean, either way, it's a pretty dominant position. You can't brawl, even if he draws it, because it costs yeah. too much mana. Well, he can play Druid of the Claw with the Savage Roar next turn. Yeah, so it's pretty yeah. it's really clever. It's yeah, not, it's, it's not it's bad it's at all. Yeah. I think both options would have been good. I mean, I one, it depends on a little bit of whether he interprets Warrior can answer this, but Fraser can. He's got two. Many expensive minions. So what about the trade now? You have two options. You can either trade the Sylvanas into the Keeper to deny yourself the chances of, of taking this, the yeah. you know the weakest one, or you can just kill the, you, the biggest one. You probably one. should kill the Lotep right away because yeah. like the Shredder and the Shade are very, very good. And you're in bad shape anyway, so you have to take a risk if you want to win the game. So there's no way you just play safe here. So he's gonna go to 20, and he's taking 6, 10, 18, 19. So yeah. So he needs to shield maiden armor up? Yeah, he needs shield maiden armor up definitely, but... 
kills the shade. He also needs to not steal the keeper. Too far, yeah. <laughs> yeah. If he steals the keeper, he's toasty toast. Yeah. Thirteen. And I'm afraid to say those words because I've seen it happen too often. Oh, oh he, he takes the Lothev. And so now, now, now he's alive. alive. So Unless. I mean, force of nature. Uh, Unless right? force of nature, obviously, but. That's correct. And, I mean, that's a pretty reasonable amount Keeper. of uh, oh. pressure on the board. So that's 6, um, 10 plus six, 16 damage. Uh, is it's, it's 19, 17. actually, so he needed to steal a lot of Oh, that was the exact then? Uh, what he needed to do to survive? In case he would like steal anything else, he would be dead, so he was pretty lucky. But now, now it's very difficult for Tice. Some, sometimes lucky. Is it? You should just push for damage to the face. That's how you win. I mean, you well, have Keeper as three damage next turn. So if your opponent gains up two from armor up, you still kill him. Yeah, it's like a good play. Like, obviously, the Alex Strata would be very bad for him now, but... Yeah. Yeah, and he still has to deal with the board, right? Yeah, well, yeah. Like, he can trade two minions. <laughs> we're, we're forgetting so the fact that there's still three minions, only two for Warrior. But there are like two Force of Natures, two swipes in the deck. Yeah, he has a lot of burst damage, so, uh, so now the game's over. Is it? What about Doomsayer? Uh, yeah, maybe. Yeah, actually, it doesn't uh, matter. It doesn't, doesn't matter. matter. It doesn't matter so yeah. What about Nefarian? Can it do anything? Not for Seven one mana. Right. Or maybe... Claw? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> maybe Innervate something? Well, you should play it anyway, right? Just in to see what you can get. Yeah. No, oh, come on, no. play the Nefarian. Oh. Oh. So was there something in Airway? Innervate to heal eight, maybe? Oh, Innervate Healing Touch? Healing Touch, yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. yeah, so he needed to get Doomsayer <laughs> and then Innervate right, the Healing, healing Touch off yeah. the period. <laughs> if that would happen... <laughs> <laughs> the internet would explode. Yeah. Because yeah. there was a post uh, the other day on the forums showing how Nefarian against uh, Shaman got two totemic yeah. fights. <laughs> Nice. It's like, what are you going to do? Like, Warrior already is disadvantaged against Shaman. <laughs> you just got two totemic <laughs> mites off your Nefarian. It's like, <laughs> sweet deal, bro. So, yeah, no, Tyson's is now in very good spot because his Paladin ha should have good matchup against both Control Absolutely. Warrior and Handlock, so he should manage to win at least one of these. We'll see in a second. There's Hearts. Wow, well, wait, wait, there's a um, <laughs> Handlock, never mind. Yeah. <laughs> Well, he would have been super Draxis. happy. Yeah. yeah, he would. He would have been super happy with the Harrison Jones against that, uh, against the Warrior. But in this situation, Minibot and Peacekeeper both are also really great drops here. For sure. I mean, you can pretty much answer a lot of the Handlock's threats through what Handlock or for what Paladin provides. Oh, yeah. that's awesome! Oh, yeah, it's an yeah. all. It's yeah. good. And uh, it's very difficult, uh, important to have some pressure as well because you know if Handlock has a lot of time, he just draw two yeah. every turn. So yeah, for sure. Yeah, I was thinking about keeping the um, Paladin Shredder because you don't want to drop the Peacekeeper on turn three, mm -hmm. right? Because you're starting, uh, you're going second, so there will be like probably no minion that you can peacekeeper, yeah. so you would like to coin out the Paladin Shredder yeah, on 10-3. It's possible, but you s somehow want to draw Juggler and uh, Master and these kind of right. stuff, so... Problematic cards early on. Again, one of the hardest things for Handlock to deal with, just generally speaking, is the stickiness of minions. It's partially what gives you know Zoo even a chance against Handlock, even though there is big swing turns that locks you out of the game. Yeah. Oh, man. It's starting to curve out. There it is. Whoa. Yeah. So he's oh all right. Yeah, that, that, that's how it works, right? We just talked about it. <laughs> yeah. yeah Mulligan away. Mulligan away. Mulligan away. Yeah. Yeah. Right sure anyway, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, that's how it functions. Quartermaster. Well, seems like he can just push out the shredder here. Yeah, because uh, in case he has an owl, so in case he plays uh, the drag, he, he can silence it and, right. and if use it's a hero giant. power. Yeah. It's giant. You piece it's not that great, but. It's it such a liability in this situation. There's yeah. no Hellfire too. Yeah. Yeah, poor Twilight Drake. Never saw it coming. <laughs> you think so? <laughs> All right. Well, it looks like the Paladin's doing a pretty good amount of pressure here, and he does have a quality, so he can shove for game-ending damage. It's one of the things where you don't have to fear Molten Giants because you have the answer. Yeah, anyway. yeah it's. One of the key cards in the matchup. So. Oh, he plays the Siphon Soul. Look at that. Yeah. Second Molten Giant. But again, uh, Molten Giant's not even that effective when you have a quality. But also compound yeah. the fact that he doesn't have Taunt. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, so, well, well, so the Paladin doesn't have that much burst damage. So if you just at, let's say, 10, 
And True. you don't have a board, you don't need to put town to these molten's. So True. it's a lot about dealing with the board. So here it needs to pick up Hellfire or Shadow Flame. Oh, oh! Now we see the huge wow. misplay <laughs> of not playing yeah, with not, your not putting no. The he he, had, he had it in the middle, and there was an owl on the. Oh yeah. Right. Oh yeah, so. yeah, yeah. You're right. But you should put the most resilient minion on the left of it, right? Exactly. So the, the mini bot. So he did. He placed another mini bot there. There it is. And now all of a sudden, you you went from playing paladin to playing shaman. <laughs> and uh, you're you're like in a really tough spot because you don't have any taunts. And he spawns Searing Totem each turn. Exactly. He's rolling Searing Totems. So what's the play here? You just owl top and double double giant. Uh, You'll be at eleven, taking six, go to five. So what you if survive. What if he has quartermaster? True silver. And quartermaster, you you go. You would survive this, but. Yeah, it would be like very bad against equality. Like, there's no winning play for at this point. So probably. this is four six damage. Uh, plus no. four, it's ten. Yeah, he's got ten from the quartermaster. Six eight, ten. ten yeah. I guess you can go for it, right? Go for the quartermaster and just push for damage. Yeah. Oh, well, it's kind of bad against Shadow Flame. Did, wouldn't he have used AOE before? No, he, no, he no. didn't have a board yeah. exactly. Yeah. yeah, you're right. So the other option is just. Equality here, trade an owl and giant, attack for four, and play hero power. What about Sylvanas and push? Or, like, this, there's a lot of options. So you can obviously push the damage through. Sylvanas wouldn't be so bad either. Yeah, he used an owl just now. Yeah. yeah I probably like the Sylvanas most here. Sylvanas trade to move with the owl for yep. one of the dudes, right? Yeah, and then go face with the rest. Because it is on curve, and it's also the strongest minion you have. Yeah, and also like <laughs> you're keeping the equality which and the, the quartermaster, which both of these are very strong later. Mm, I don't like the quality at, at all right now. It's not really needed. The thing is, when you see, when you kill off a molten giant, you're already yeah. Addressing the fact that it's a threat of not pushing for damage, right? Because you don't you don't attack because you don't want to enable molten giants. When you see molten giants, it's almost a free pass to attack as much as you yeah. want. Yeah. Also, yeah. there's a interesting situation when he sacrificed Ty sacrificed the two one the mini bot instead of a yeah. you know searing totem. So yeah. uh, that just tells your opponent, okay, I have the core master in my yeah. hand. Right. And I mean, there's unfortunately nothing he can do about it. Yeah. He can thing siphon he can soul a one one. To Ooh, play around yeah. quartermaster, yeah, he finish. can uh, he can play giant and do it actually. Like and then oh, yeah, right. well, like Six. why not? So, like it's very obvious that he has quartermaster. It's mm -hmm. like it looks very weird, but you can also tap and hope you top deck something. Top deck like a taunt giver or like hellfire. Well, hellfire would be awesome. Yeah, that's some, right. something that or can taunt help. giver. Yeah, yeah. Ta taunt giver is the the big key here because he doesn't have anything to really make these I threats. I probably like it. A little bit more because, you know, if you siphon sold the one one, I that would have been the sickest bluff of all time if he could force that from like and yeah. Tyson didn't have the quartermaster. To be honest, I, I think he shouldn't sacrifice the uh, mini bot. <laughs> so now oh, it's lethal and the game's over. And that's it. I mean, it's it's really hard to make that call a lot of times yeah. in terms of like that's such a bad rem use of your removal. Yeah, like you probably would lose the game like five turn later. Yeah. But but to be honest, I think Tice made a mistake with telegraphing the quartermaster. He should have just more concealed it more and not tell tell uh, his opponent that he has a quartermaster. Yeah, like, it was possible, but this was, like, technically a better play, so it was just revealing a little bit yeah. more so information. I mean, he, but you, you posture for lethal. It's, yeah. it's like, the, the, the right technical play if you want to just threaten to kill and end the game from that mm -hmm. point on. And plus, it's like, you know, I like that philosophy of make them have the proper response. It, it was, he still dealt with that previous turn, very awkwardly. What are you silenced and played a molten giant? And yeah, it was kind of obvious that he doesn't have yeah. a town giver. And mm -hmm. yeah, that's true. That's a very good point. So you know, I, I think he made a proper read the previous turn, saying like my opponent was uncomfortable before. I think I can press for the win here. And besides that, he also had more backup, right? He had yeah. a peacekeeper keep to really peacekeeper. Like, yeah, keep. He should be fine even yeah. in a longer game. All right. Sure. Well, that sure. wraps it up, and uh, that finishes round five. I think uh, we're going to have Tice come up for a few words and uh, talk to us about how he's doing so far. He is the only member from Nylum, even though life coach RDU, the reigning Dream Max Summer Champion, uh, couldn't make it here. He is going to rep.
So Tice, how do you feel about that series? It was it felt pretty good for you overall, and you seem to have mm -hmm. really good matchups against this handlock. Yeah, like uh, I was really prepared for, especially in this tournament, for the control matchups, and I think my lineup was really, really good against him. Yeah, yeah we said the same that um, mm -hmm. Sainzov pointed out that handlock is the weakest link uh, in Fresno's lineup against yours. Oh, I could Varlog was somehow weak as well, but yeah. Yeah, like Warrior was Warrior and Warlock were just really good. I didn't even care that much that he started with Rogue. That mm -hmm. uh, he had his Rogue out because I knew he would like that called being the deck that would win against any of my decks, so... Exactly, yeah. yeah. Mm. How are you doing overall? You had a very mm. awkward tournament so far. You lost your first mm. match, unfortunately, to an unknown player, mm -hmm. but then you had two walkover <laughs> win buys where you... So mm -hmm. basically, at day number one, you could have not showed up and the same thing would have happened. <laughs> you would have yeah. lost the first game, got two mm -hmm. buys, and came to day number two. Did that mess with you at all with the, how you've been feeling for the tournament? Yeah, it was like after the... Um, like, I, lo I was really sad that I lost the first game. I played against a really good guy, I, like, but... I was really sad after that, and yeah, there were like some people not showing up, so I can understand the walkover when you are one or <laughs> zero one. But uh, when I was one one, I really didn't expect it, and I actually didn't like it. Like there are so many people that want to play here, and uh, it's not good to yeah. just have the walkover. Yeah, the, really same long the same happened uh, last year during summer because mm -hmm. we had like 200 people that w that was sign up. And they were just not showing to the Yeah, hundred people yeah. showed up, and there's like a hundred free buys, basically. Yeah. yeah, it was really weird. So well, yeah, it's pretty sad, but uh, I'm happy now with yeah. today that I can play and that I that I pr that I perform now. Yeah. So. And on the other hand, you saved some energy. Like yesterday, it was mm -hmm. like very exhausting mm -hmm. for everyone, and now you are basically fresh mm -hmm. because th because you ha didn't have to play, and so yeah. you can perform very well. And today. I took a good rest, so yeah. also what is also really important. So yeah, I was prepared for today, but yeah. it's still awesome. gonna be really hard. Like yeah. you, I had to win already like. Six games in a row. Well, I had some luck in the in, in the first matches, but it's still going to be hard. But two to go now. That's right. Do you feel a little burden at all on behalf of Nylum because you're the only player here, and they're being touted mm -hmm. as currently the top Hearthstone team? So you you have to single-handedly mm -hmm. defend it. Also, Radu's honor because mm -hmm. uh, RDU is the the champion from last year, mm -hmm. Max Summer, and he can't even be here to, to defend mm -hmm. it. Yeah, I've. Mm, I really actually don't feel that much pressure. Maybe there is a bit pressure, but like it's only po positive for me and. Uh, no, I'm just here here to play and just try to get in the top eight. That's my target. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, do you have any other questions, mm -hmm. Lothar, for no, your no, buddy Ties? No, Dan? I think we're good. So. All right. Well, congratulations. Good mm -hmm. luck in the next round. You still have to win two more in order to advance, but uh, you're mm -hmm. looking pretty sharp so far. Good luck, man. That's it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, mm -hmm. guys, uh, we have a couple of score updates, in fact. Let's go ahead and take a look at how everything has panned out after five rounds of Swiss play. We have some interesting updates. I think you just saw on your social media uh, update that Dog defeated Reyna 3-2, which means he eliminated him and he's still alive. Let's go ahead and look at the four remaining players who are currently undefeated. It is Kaldi, Tither Celestial, Hawkeye from Greece, who did really well in Europe versus China, and Oskaka. So those players, those names, don't actually surprise me that much. And if we take a look at how round five ended up panning out, uh, as, as you can see, those players did end up taking the wins. Gara happened on stream versus Oskaka. Oh, look Oskaka. at that. Nico uh, won against Ekop. Oh, he eliminated yeah. Ekop uh, and put him 3-2. And of course, you just saw Tice, the dog we just mentioned. Uh, Chalky stays alive by taking out Tristan J. And the fish you did get eliminated. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, Force and Amaz are still alive in the tournament. Freaky still showing some life there. He's a player that's been mentioned as a big practice partner. And D2, uh, oh, actually, I think this starts from this point on all the two lost. People. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so we don't have many players that are eligible left. Only two more rounds. And it'll blow by really quickly. We're going to feature a lot of those matches coming up on stream. Blow by. Oh. Or blow back. Ah, blow back. <laughs> Hashtag blow back. That's right. <laughs> Hashtag you're watching Hearthstone. Don't go anywhere, guys. We're going to take a break. When we come back, more Hearthstone action here at DreamHack Summer 2015.